Welcome to the 2021 Teaching Awards Ceremony. I am Mary Wright, Associate Provost for Teaching and Learning and Director of the Sheridan Center for Teaching and Learning. Thank you for being here this afternoon. I want to begin by thanking Deborah McElhaney for her work in organizing this event, as well as Meg Silvestri from Event Services, the Media Services Group, our captioner and ASL interpreters, and the Office of University Communications. This has truly been an extraordinary year, which has stretched all of us in, in so many ways. So we have a lot to celebrate tonight. And despite the events of this week and indeed this year, it's important to take time to do exactly that, to celebrate the achievements of teaching and learning at Brown. Last year's ceremony was canceled. So this one will include recognition of several awardees from last year. One benefit of this format is that we are able to be joined not only by the awardees and their students, but also by friends and family from around the world. So throughout the ceremony, if you would like to post any congratulations, please use the Q&A feature in Zoom. To begin, I'd like to turn things over to Provost Richard M. Locke for his remarks. Uh, thank you, Mary. And hi, everyone. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to uh, be here with you uh, this uh, afternoon. Uh, let me also uh, thank uh, the Sheridan Center Media Services and the Office of the University Communication for bringing us all together. It's really wonderful. Uh, it's a genuine pleasure to be here uh, this evening to be part of this annual celebration of teaching excellence at Brown. As Mary said, this has been a truly exceptional year that has challenged all of us. And I'm proud to be a member of the community that not only continued to teach and advise and mentor, but did so with such steadfast commitment to innovation and excellence and care for one another. And as a member of the faculty, like all of you, I care deeply uh, about uh, teaching and my value, you know, I value tremendously the interactions that I have uh, with students. And I taught this year as well. I teach a, a 60 person case-based uh, class uh, in the fall. Uh, and it was tough um, because I had to completely redesign it I had to think about uh, assignments differently, about interacting. It was a hybrid course. So uh, some people in the classroom, some people uh, on Zoom, but I had tremendous help uh, uh, from Sheridan, uh, from DLD uh, and from uh, my peers, uh, other uh, teachers, instructors, uh, even the students really helped uh, me get through. And I learned a lot. I learned about um, how to design a course differently, and some of those lessons I will continue uh, to do uh, in the future. But uh, one of the things that I really learned, especially in the kind of darker days of November, early December, was um, how important that kind of human contact is, how important the human interaction uh, is. Um, I started doing walking office hours uh, with, uh, with my students. And while we talked maybe about a reading or an assignment or something for a couple minutes, most of it was just connecting as people and how important that is as part of our job as teaching. Uh, so it's been an extraordinary year. I know how challenging it's been for all of you. And I really want to thank you. Thank you for your effort, for your dedication. Uh, and again, as I said before, for the care uh, that you uh, have shown to one another and to our students. You know, over the last year, so many of, in our community have been exemplary in navigating and overcoming the consequences of this pandemic and ensuring that our students made progress uh, towards uh, their degree. And today we're here to celebrate 52 of those individuals who have truly distinguished themselves through their teaching, mentoring, and advising. Now, many of the awardees uh, that uh, are here this evening have been cited for inspiring actions during the pandemic, such as their creativity in designing online and hybrid teaching experiences or their outreach uh, to students. And it's really wonderful to, to, to see how people went beyond, above and beyond what was expected of them to really 
make sure that they were doing the very best they could under such difficult circumstances to reach our students and to give them a world-class educational experience. A second theme that was evident in the nominations uh, uh, for these teaching awards was how the Brown faculty enabled students to engage with their fullest potential uh, in this research university to not only get a world-class education, but to also contribute to the development of cutting edge and socially impact knowledge creation. And finally, uh, what was so wonderful about uh, the, the different nominations was evidence of perhaps what is the greatest impact that we all have uh, among our, for our students as teachers. And that is to recognize the potential in students, potential that often they don't yet see in themselves, but we're able to recognize, nurture, and help elevate uh, for them. This is just a real gift that we give our students every year. And it's wonderful to see how so many of you gave that gift to your students these last two years. We're here this evening to celebrate 52 individuals for their hard work, for their commitment and their influence uh, that they've had on our campus and beyond. And I I've said this before, it it's actually a genuine pleasure to participate in the Sheridan uh, um, Teaching Award ceremonies because it's just so great uh, to be in a community that values teaching. And what I've said in the past, and I really mean it, um, is what you do in the classroom with the students, what you do every day really matters. It matters to your students, it matters to Brown University, and it matters to our society, perhaps more so today than at any other time. So I wanna thank you for your contributions. I wanna thank you for making Brown the extraordinary institution uh, that it is because we're extraordinary because of the people who make up our community. And I wanna congratulate all of you for your well-deserved and recognized uh, accomplishments. So thank you. And with that, let me turn it over to Mary. Thank you, Provost Locke. This is the teaching awards ceremony, but I want to begin by making visible the work of 100 faculty for the intensive work they have done over the past two years either by engaging in professional learning around their own teaching or by supporting the efforts of others during the pandemic. And so their names will scroll past as I describe these programs. First, thank you to the six Provost Faculty Teaching Fellows. The work of the fellows has included Sheridan's Seminar for Transformation around anti-racist teaching, creation of faculty writing groups and research into course pathways and online discussions. Next, a huge thank you to the 32 faculty facilitators who work with Sheridan staff members, Eric Calder, Melissa Kane, and Maggie Vecchioni on the Anchor Course Design Institute, which worked with well over 300 instructors this past year. Participants described this program as enriching and phenomenal, praising facilitators' honesty, transparency, and approachability. Next, I would like to recognize the 17 instructors across disciplines who engaged in the Data Science Course Design Institute. This program is a collaboration between the Data Science Initiative and the Sheridan Center and is led by DSI lecturer Linda Clark. Professor Clark will be offering this program again in August, and there is a short form for faculty to signal their interest to participate and work with a Data Science Fellow on the Sheridan website. The Junior Faculty Teaching Fellows is a year-long program for lecturers and assistant professors, which is led by Sheridan staff member, Jessica Metzler. We have valued working with the 14 instructors who engage with this initiative in this and last academic year. One participant noted that they appreciated the opportunity to meet with people from other fields, hear about some of the problems they were facing in their teaching and come up with collaborative solutions and ideas. Also for new faculty, the Launch Course Design Institute is a week-long introduction to evidence-based teaching and digital learning, which is led by Sheridan, Stacy Lawrence, and Jim Foley. I'd like to thank the 22 faculty who allocated a precious summer week in August to course design, and thank you to Stacy and Jim for creating a program that one new faculty member described as a huge for feeling welcome in a new community. 
Finally, in 2019-20, eight faculty participated in the year-long problem-solving course design institute. Also part of the Brown Learning Collaborative, this program is led by Christina Smith and Stacy Lawrence. One participant described this program as game-changing, noting that the issue of transparency of purpose was something I had not given any thought to before. The length of this list and the speed at which I'm speaking is evidence of the commitment that members of Brown's teaching communities have to enhancing their instruction. So a big congratulations and thank you to them. Before moving to the awards, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues and all five hubs of the Sheridan Center, digital learning and design, writing and English language support, multimedia, STEM and assessment and teaching communities for their tireless support of teaching and learning excellence over this past year. Now let's turn to our awards. Again, let me note that you've, if you would like to post congratulations for a colleague or family member, please use the Q&A feature on Zoom. First, Dean Kevin McLaughlin will introduce the awards for the Office of the Dean of the Faculty. My name is Kevin McLaughlin. I'm the Dean of the Faculty and the George Hazard Crooker University Professor of English Comparative Literature and German Studies at Brown. Thank you for joining us this afternoon as we honor some of the finest scholars and teachers at Brown. I would like to extend my sincerest congratulations to the six recipients of the Faculty Teaching Excellence Awards. I'm delighted to be able to recognize your teaching accomplishments in this capacity and wish you all the best. As usual, we received a large number of, of nominations for these prestigious teaching awards this year. So let me especially congratulate the awardees for having been selected from this very talented pool of instructors. As you know, we value teaching very highly at Brown. I can tell you as Dean of the Faculty that in the annual reviews of faculty, as well as in the tenure and promotion process, including advising, teaching is vitally important. Obviously, this year has been exceptional. And it seems to me that at Brown, we can feel cautiously proud of the way our faculty responded and are responding to the enormous challenges of moving so much of our teaching online. Nearly all of our faculty had to prepare entirely new versions of their courses for remote instruction this year. We are only now beginning to get a sense of what we've learned, but what I want to say right now, even before the results are in, is that I personally witnessed a massive focus on teaching the likes of which we have not seen in this past year. So on this occasion, in addition to congratulating the outstanding work of the individual awardees, it's important to recognize the extraordinary collective commitment to teaching on the part of our faculty and to thank them for their dedication. Congratulations once again to you, the teaching awardees. Thank you, Dean McLaughlin. So first, the Dean's Awards for Excellence in Teaching. The student nominator for Brad Gibbs began his letter with, it is not contentious to propose that finance can be confusing. However, Professor Gibbs successfully counters this, this perception with business school level cases and Excel-based projects that mirror the work students will do after graduation. Next, we have Laura Lopez Sanders. Professor Lopez Sanders is praised for her warm professionalism that effectively mi mixes head and heart. Professor Lopez Sanders demonstrates exceptional care for the many students from underrepresented backgrounds who are drawn to her courses on ethnog ethnography and race, while she engages students with cutting edge research about those topics. Next, we have the Philip J. Bray Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Physical Sciences. Sohini Ramachandran brings the complexity and rigor of her research to courses such as statistical analysis of biological data. Her nominator notes that she empowers students with her ability to teach coding skills and scientific reasoning. Next, we have the William G. McLaughlin Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Social Sciences. Parker Van Valkenburg's letter of support noted that he is able to engage and truly impact students over Zoom. 
specifically through his ability to translate field-based labs to online experiences. For example, in one Zoom class, he demonstrated flint napping techniques in his own backyard. Next, we have the Elizabeth Le Duke Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Life Sciences. Tony Maria Achille is praised for her talent to engage students with both science and social action. The student nominator indicated that she discusses course topics in a way that encourage you to think deeper and sometimes even take a step back and reflect and then take action. So for example, facilitated by Dr. Achille, a class conversation on vaccine hesitancy gave rise to the student initiative Brown Boosts Immunity, a public health campaign about the importance of vaccinations. The John Rowe Workman Award for Excellence in Teaching in, in the Humanities. Professor Andre Willis's nominator notes that he understands the role of the educator in Black communities and brings that vital task to his Brown lecture hall and seminar room. For anyone that knows Professor Willis, it will not surprise you to hear that he is recognized for his commitment to teaching as a sacred vocation. Congratulations to the six Dean of the Faculty awardees. Next, Dean Rashid Zia will introduce the awards for the college. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rashid Zia. As Dean of the College, it is my sincere pleasure to congratulate all of our distinguished awardees. Teaching has always mattered at Brown, and your commitment to teaching and learning in all forms, as advisors and instructors, as mentors and scholars, is even more important today. Brown's emphasis on teaching as a collective partnership defines our shared learning community. This extends both to the partnership of faculty, which we are gathered to celebrate today, and also to the partnerships between students and teachers advisors and advisees. Our colleagues being honored today, together with the many who are nominated for awards, have taken a lead in working alongside students to create, share, and apply knowledge in service of our community. They have partnered with students on research awards and theses to discover and explore new fields. They have trained and collaborated with undergraduate TAs to, and fellows to develop new courses and transform our curriculum and they have partnered with students to ensure that the lessons learned in our classrooms and laboratories also help to address problems of meaning and purpose in the world. There's a passage written by Brown students that I'm fond of. It says that the university should have as one of its aims, creating an environment in which students are encouraged to formulate and consider the problems which are most basic to them, what their lives are about, why they seek the goals they do, where they want to go, and what they want to do. And if you could read the recommendation letters of the faculty being honored today, you would know that they have done this and more. In the most fundamental terms, our awardees today have supported the intellectual and the personal growth of countless students, and in so doing, have helped them build lives of sustained learning, meaning, and purpose learning, meaning, and purpose, which the events of the last year have made even more important. I would feel remiss if I did not remark on these events. And yet, for just this evening, I would like to focus on what the cauldron of the last year made possible. The relationships forged in classrooms and on Zoom this year have created opportunities for connection, collaboration, and learning in the midst of unbelievable grief and uncertainty. And we are grateful for the efforts that our awardees and all of our faculty have made in creating welcoming learning environments for our students. In the conversations that I've been fortunate to have with students this year, I've spoken with first years who have expressed excitement about readings and discussions with new classmates, and seniors whose research with you is helping to discover and define new fields of study. I have heard from students of all classes eager to make sense and meaning of the world. Learning, for example, about national systems of public health and the wonders of biotechnology, and also exploring history and its connection with the events of today and the deep inequities of our society. The work that you do has helped our students and our community 
make sense of and meaning of the world in ways that will help transform our shared future. It is an honor to serve alongside colleagues whose thoughtful and thorough approach to teaching has empowered our students to reflect upon and expand their own pathways as they navigate the uncharted present and future. Congratulations to our awardees and all of our nominees this year. Thank you, Dean Zia. 40 years ago, Dean Harriet Sheridan wrote that good teachers must always be scholars. And the next group of three faculty are recipients of the Henry Merritt Wriston Fellowship, which is awarded for a record of excellence in teaching and scholarship. Adrian Keene writes that tribal critical race theory is a foundational theoretical framing in both her research and teaching. And she notes, stories are not separate from theory. They make up theory and therefore are real and legitimate sources of data and ways of being. And Professor Keene works to enact this tenet in the classroom. Next, Lisa Biggs uses an interdisciplinary approach to her pedagogy, one that draws upon her training as a theater artist and performance studies scholar. Brown students describe her teaching as eye-opening and note that she creates a welcoming classroom environment despite often challenging subject matter. Next, Leon Hilton is also cited for his synthetic approach. His research brings together modern and contemporary theater and performance, disability studies and neurodiversity, feminist and queer theory, critical race studies and psychoanalysis. And he has developed courses that similarly pull together for students the threads of these interdisciplinary interests. Next, there are three winners of the Karen T. Romer Award for Excellence in Advising. Elena Shee's student nominators point to her impact on students through her community engaged research. And as one nominator noted, her relentless energy and almost unlimited imagination of a better world. This impact is concisely captured by another student nominator's experience. I never considered becoming an academic before meeting Professor Shi, And now that I do know her, it's the only career I'm very seriously considering. Students praise George Kanadaris' abilities to draw them into the engagement of his lab research. In his intelligent robotics lab, students described how he uses lab group meetings effectively so that undergraduates understand what each graduate student is working on and how that project fits in with the lab's bigger research agenda. Carrie Smith has created a research colloquium for East Asian studies to bring students across campus together to practice presentations, get feedback and develop community. Like the other two Romer nominees, he's also praised for his individual impact and invitation to students to see themselves in the discipline. For example, one student nominator noted, he treated me like a legitimate historian and writer when I didn't feel good enough to aspire to be a scholar. For the Howard R. Swear Engaged Faculty Award for Teaching, the 2020 winner is Brad Brockman. Professor Brockman has helped to create over 140 internships for Brown students in the Center for Prisoner Health and Human Rights. His courses on incarceration disparities in health and designing education for better prisoner and community health provide opportunities for student engagement in social justice projects that respond to the intersections of criminal justice, public health, poverty, and race. The 2021 winners of the Swearer Award are Catherine Trimber and Rahul Vanjani. Professors Trimber and Vanjani partner with House of Hope Community Development Corporation in Warwick. Their pedagogy is epitomized by the creation of street medicine teams that bring together staff, case managers, and medical students to deliver patient care that meets the community where they are most needed. Congratulations to these nine college awardees. Dean Andrew Campbell will next introduce the awards for the graduate school. Good evening. I am Andrew G. Campbell, Dean of the Graduate School. I am excited to join you today virtually. 
I want to congratulate both our 2020 and 2021 exceptional faculty members who were selected for the Graduate School Faculty Award for Advising and Mentoring, and our outstanding graduate students chosen for the Excellence in Teaching Award. I also want to thank the Sheridan Center for organizing this celebratory event. During this most challenging and unusual year, graduate students and faculty have made a substantial difference in the academic and personal lives of Brown students. Quality teaching and advising makes an enormous difference in how Brown University students learn and grow as scholars and individuals. The effort and care that faculty and graduate students put into their work is noticeable. We see it not just when reading through written evaluations and nominations, but in how students navigate the university and look towards their futures. I am incredibly grateful for the work that our awardees have put into their teaching, advising, and mentoring. They're among the many who, during a year of constant challenges, make a significant difference. They have demonstrated how important their roles are in the lives of our students. Those we recognize today are passionate about their areas of expertise and it's reflected in their teaching and mentoring. They give of their time, adding extra office hours, continually revising course content, this year in multiple formats, to make sure all students in a course succeed. They are often involved beyond Brown, teaching and mentoring also in public schools. We may wonder how they have time to do all this work. Our awardees today have shown how critical teaching and advising is to keep a department connected when many are working and studying remotely. They strive to encourage students from their first day at Brown well into their careers after Brown. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Dean Campbell. There are four awardees in 2020 and 2021 for the Graduate School Faculty Award for Advising and Mentoring. Michelle Clayton is the Director of Graduate Studies for Hispanic Studies. In this role, Professor Clayton developed several initiatives, including a monthly departmental colloquium where faculty and graduate students can present their work or practice their job talks. Former advisees praise her mentorship noting, Besides fostering my voice as a scholar, she also helped solidify my voice as an instructor. Next, Sarah Delaney was nominated by the entire Chemistry Graduate Student Leadership Committee for her efforts to revitalize that, that group, as well as her outreach and encouragement of check-ins and office hours. As Director of Graduate Studies, Professor Delaney has also developed a peer mentoring program, small group study sessions, professional development workshops, a journal club, and office coffee hours. Nitsan Shoref's nomination was co-written by 17 current and former students and accompanied by a group portrait of most of them. Students commented on her talent for demystifying the hidden curriculum or the backstage workings of academia, as well as her capacity to supportively stretch her students. One former student noted, she is the kind of advisor who would never, ever let me sink, but lets me falter just enough so that I can learn to swim on my own. In Amal Trivedi's one-to-one -one work, some evidence of his impact is the fact that his doctoral mentees have published 94 peer-reviewed publications in journals such as the New England Journal of Medicine and Health Services Research. Yet, he also thinks structurally about advising. For example, during the pandemic, he organized monthly lunches with graduate students and a walk with the faculty series to keep students connected to Brown faculty. There are eight graduate student awardees for the Presidential Award for Excellence in Teaching. First is Muntazir Ali. Students describe Muntazir Ali's creative approaches to engagement, which creates spaces for them to learn and grow. For example, in a course on Persian and Urdu poetry, one student noted how Muntazir asked students to translate poems in Persian, even if they had no knowledge of the language with the help of some defined words. 
The student noted that the results weren't strictly accurate, but they pushed me to think of the creative choices that go into translations in a new way. Christina Bailey Heitholt illustrates the generational effect that good advising can have. A former advisee who worked with Dr. Bailey Heitholt on a research project related, instead of simply presenting my data to her, I would be prompted to think about why I observed something I may not have expected or why a certain experiment may not have worked out. Beyond the what, she pushed me to pursue the how and the why. She was inspiring me to think like a scientist. Now that I am a teaching assistant channeling Christina's techniques and teaching, I encourage students to think about the why and the how. Alyssa Pascuso illustrates the impact graduate TAs can have on curricular innovation. In addition to her work with Providence Public Schools, Alyssa took the lead on redesigning the large enrollment course, Mars, Moon, and the Earth, that changed the standard midterm final structure into five post-module quizzes for students to get more practice and feedback. She also added discussions to the course so that students can get a better sense of the social relevance of the material with prompts such as, what's the value of space science and exploration for a planet that is in crisis? And what should be the future goals of space science? Les Robinson's nomination noted his attention to out-of-class resources that would support students' learning. To help develop students as writers, Les developed a series of webinars on topics like how to write a thesis statement, he is also well known for his housekeeping emails sent to students in his sections in advance, like a section specific newsletter. These emails include reading recommendations, discussion questions, and tips for improving research and writing skills. Christopher Lee is nominated for his inclusive facilitation work, both in face to face classes, as well as fully asynchronous courses where he was able to coax students to respond to one another in discussion forums in a way that helped create an environment of collective engagement and support. Further, several students wrote how his work on critical trans studies has created much needed space within the academy for students to explore intersectional scholarship and queer of color critique. Hannah Kruger has been a key volunteer for her department's teaching and outreach program in local Providence Public Schools. She designed and taught several modules on weather and climate, which are now available for teachers to use. Further, Hannah was a key contributor to a new class in DEEPS, Introduction to Methods and Data Analysis, and helped move it to a virtual format. Jonathan Cortez engages students in conversations about race and racism while also being mindful that teaching these topics in the context of the past year had the potential to paralyze students with grief. Jonathan acknowledges the weight of the course content while also adding creative, perhaps joyful assignments like creating course playlists where students are social movement DJs. Lakshmi Govarandajan excels at teaching challenging courses such as introduction to programming. He does this both through the use of humor, such as Star Wars inspired eye clicker questions, as well as his care in teaching students without background in the material. One student related, when I arrived at Brown, I knew that no matter what, I would stay away from STEM courses. However, this student found himself in Lakshmi's section and then observed how Lakshmi, despite being busy, saw his work to teach us how to code and instill confidence in us. And the end of the story is that this student is now pursuing computational research. Congratulations to the 12 graduate school awardees. Next, to introduce the awards from the medical school and the biological sciences, Dean Jack Elias. Good evening, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jack Elias. I'm the Senior Vice President for Health Affairs and Dean of Medicine and Biologic Sciences. Let me start out by saying thank you to all of the awardees. Thank you for your commitment to teaching and mentoring our future thought leaders and our visionaries of tomorrow. 
I do not have to tell you that our students, whether you're talking about undergrads, graduate students, medical students, junior faculty, or other trainees, are our legacy. I also do not have to tell you that the quality of our legacy is directly proportional to our efforts as teachers, mentors, and role models. It is this dedication that has allowed our students to reach their full potential. Another point that I want to make is about the complexity of the educational mission in biomed. We are attempting to integrate basic and clinical knowledge and patient care to grow future clinicians, researchers, and educators. These are complicated undertakings. And from where I sit, I can say that you have done a tremendous job and have established a wonderful legacy. So I wanna take this moment to especially congratulate the 2020 and 2021 awardees from Biomed that we are celebrating tonight. I thank you for your unwavering commitment to making substantial and critical contributions to our educational mission and at teaching and educating at Brown. One of the most fun parts of my job is honoring deserving faculty like you. And so thank you for giving me this opportunity. Once again, congratulations on these amazing accomplishments. Please remember that you have changed the lives of your students and that you can take a little bit of credit for all the good that they will do during their careers. Congratulate yourself and enjoy the moment. You have earned it. Thank you, Dean Elias. Jessica Plavicki completely reimagined re the course Environmental Health and Disease. And as a result, enrollment has tripled. One student remarked that the course has made me a much better writer and student. Amanda Jamison has developed innovative assignments to help students learn virology. Students work with the multimedia lab to create animation shorts, allowing students to demonstrate deeper knowledge and scientific communication skills. The nominator for Nikos Topinos writes, when faced with a student who is struggling, Nikos sees someone with potential and he devises a plan tailored to help them grow into a mature scientist. Richard Fryman is praised for allowing PhD students to help steer the direction of the research while maintaining an open door for questions and guidance. Aisling Kefri, Diane Hoffman Kim, Suzanne Colby, and Michael Mello are recognized for their work on the 2020 Advanced Clinical Translational Research Mentoring Team. They have facilitated workshops for clinical and academic fa faculty with the aim of guiding colleagues toward becoming more effective research mentors and improving relationships with junior faculty colleagues. The 2021 winners, Ulrich Mende, Sharon Rounds, and Audra Van Wart, are recognized for their leadership of the Advanced K Scholar Development Initiative. Advanced K is a one-year intensive writing and development program for junior investigators to gain mentoring for career development awards. Congratulations to the 11 awardees in the medical school and biological sciences. Next, Dean Ashish Shah will be introducing the School of Public Health Awards. Hi everyone, I'm Ashish Shah and I'm the Dean of the School of Public Health. I would like to offer my biggest, most sincere congratulations to all of Brown's faculty award winners tonight. And I'm particularly thrilled that the School of Public Health will have a chance to recognize both its 2020 award winners and its 2021 award winners. As in the past, the school will be honoring distinguished faculty for excellence in mentoring, classroom teaching, and research collaboration. But new in 2021, I'm excited to have the inaugural winner of our brand new Excellence in Community Engagement Awards. Why did we establish this? Because we think engagement and impact in the community is a critical part of who we are and what we do. 
So I'd like to reiterate my thanks and congratulations to our Public Health Award winners, and I look forward to continuing to work with all of you to further our mission. Now, teaching is a core part of the School of Public Health's mission. Through teaching, the School of Public Health trains the next generation of public health leaders to tackle the big pressing health challenges, both here in Rhode Island, across the United States, and across the globe. And one of our mottos is that our students learn public health by doing public health. Teaching and research, of course, are central to our goals. And those goals are to rigorously prepare a diverse group of public health leaders from undergraduates all the way to postdoctoral fellows to address the health needs of all people, but with a particular emphasis on the needs of historically underserved and vulnerable populations. And generating world-class public health scholarship that teaches us how to address those needs. You know, the pandemic has been so hard, but thanks to the remarkable work of our faculty and the flexibility of our students, we have made real progress. This year's nominations include inspiring stories of faculty going well above and beyond the call of duty to make students feel connected and valued and supported in this crazy remote environment that we have all been in. During this year, we have launched the Health Equity Scholars, which is aimed at changing the face of public health leadership in America. We have made critical progress on research on defeating the COVID pandemic. And through it all, we've inspired a new generation of people to go into public health. And one measure of that, our applications to the School of Public Health are up over 100% across all of our programs. So thank you for your, to the nominees and to the winners for all of your great work. And thank you to all of you for everything you do for public health. Thank you, Dean Jha. Amy Nunn is Executive Director of the Rhode Island Public Health Institute, and she has contributed to a number of community engagement initiatives, such as Food on the Move, a mobile produce market designed to make healthy food accessible and affordable, as well as the opening of Rhode Island's first LGBTQ clinic, Open Door Health. There are two winners next for the Dean's Award for Excellence in Classroom Teaching. Jennifer Nazareno is the 2020 winner for her teaching in courses such as intersectionality and health inequities. She is praised for being such a strong advocate for incorporating interdisciplinary lenses on structural and health inequities into her courses. Shira Dunzinger is the 2021 awardee for her teaching of biostatistics and applied regression. One student noted, she proved to us that every single individual in her class, regardless of where they came from or where they planned on going, was more than capable of conquering our coding and that she would be there along our journey. Students also appreciated how she enlivened Zoom teaching, such as always beginning with a fun anecdote about what national day it is. And in that spirit, let me note that today is National High Five Day which is very appropriate for a teaching award ceremony. Next, the Dean's Award for Excellence in Mentoring. One doctoral student observed, many view doctoral programs as a taxing program, conducting research for an advisor. Dr. Patricia Rizika strives to have her students work with her, not for her. Next, Jennifer Merrill. Jennifer Merrill is described as being genuinely committed to the success and growth of her students. In one-on-one -on -one meetings, she helps her advisees identify goals and then helps them attain them. She emails her advisees with upcoming conference deadlines, workshops, and grants and fellowships opportunities. In the next slide, Professor Nazarino is also being recognized for a second award as the 2021 winner for excellence in mentoring. According to her nominees, she has an impeccable ability for setting up a space of trust and camaraderie where she counterbalances students' doubts about their belongingness with empathy, non-judgment, and support. And she has also been a particularly powerful mentor for the Filipino student community. Next, ROA Gutman is the winner of the Dean's Award for Excellence in Research Collaboration. Professor Gutman places a very high value on the contributions made by students with whom he works. 
whom he notes provide methods of analysis with real problems which arise from scientific queries. And the 2020 winner is Sarah Becker. Professor Becker's nominator notes that her approach to research collaboration is collegial, respectful, pragmatic, and conducive to developing a truly equal partnership. Congratulations to the eight awardees in the School of Public Health. Next, Dean Larry Larson will introduce the awards for the School of Engineering. Hello, my name is Larry Larson. I'm the Sorensen Family Dean of the School of Engineering. And I just wanna take this opportunity to congratulate our two winners, the School of Engineering Teaching Award and the School of Engineering Mentoring Award. You know, the last year has been an incredibly challenging environment for excellence in teaching. And our two winners this year showed incredible creativity in the midst of these in intense challenges. And in the School of Engineering, we were confronted with the challenge of how to continue to deliver a rigorous and inspiring and creative learning environment for students who had been scattered all over the globe. And our winner this year was particularly effective at developing an improved teaching environment in the, in the lectures for uh, their classes. And in addition, providing a creative laboratory environment that students could create in their own homes to explore some of the fundamental scientific concepts that were being introduced in the lectures. This is an incredible challenge, a, a massive upheaval in our teaching and the School of Engineering faculty and this year's winner responded incredibly well. A second aspect of teaching in the School of Engineering, which is very important, is mentoring our students in projects and uh, groups outside of the classroom. And one of the unique features of an engineering education is a co-curricular experience that integrates classroom learning with real world experience. Our faculty spend countless hours mentoring these student groups to build some incredibly successful projects. And this year's mentoring award winner is an amazing example of uh, world leading uh, student group efforts that have achieved international uh, acclaim. So the School of Engineering last year responded incredibly well to the challenges of COVID, both from a teaching and a mentoring perspective. And let me take this opportunity to once again congratulate this year's winners who exemplify the very best, the very spirit of Brown education in a, in a world leading context. Thank you again and congratulations. Thank you, Dean Larson. The Dean's Award for Excellence in Teaching. The 2020 winner is Alan Bauer. Professor Bauer is described as a teacher who can make it so challenging and demanding, yet still retains and sparks students' interests. Problem sets might include timely material, ranging from a recently published journal article or a technical report analyzing the cause of a ferry accident in Sweden. Professor Dan Harris has redesigned the required advanced fluid mechanics class as a COEX or collaborative scholarly experience course where students practice the importance of iteration in the research and design process. During the pandemic, he reworked the hands-on class yet again to support students in their development of a proposal in the style of design engineering. The 2020 winner for the Dean's Award for Excellence in Mentoring is Kenneth Brower. Professor Brower is described as a rigorous, accessible, and supportive mentor. A former student in the Brower Lab noted that Professor Brower created a research environment where I was encouraged to come up with and validate my own ideas. And Richard Fleeter is the 2021 recipient. One advisee notes that Professor Fleeter's emphasis that no one really knows what they're doing until they have done it has motivated me to stick with engineering and remain positive, no matter how inadequate I feel in entering the professional world. During the pandemic, Professor Fleeter, Professor Fleeter 
organized weekly meetings with groups of students to discuss research options and find projects for them. Congratulations to these four School of Engineering awardees. For our final presentation, Dean Adrian Marcus will introduce the awards for the pre-college and summer undergraduate programs. My name is Adrian Marcus, and I'm the Dean of the Division for Pre-College and Summer Undergraduate Programs. I want to congratulate the instructors who were selected for the Reginald D. Archambault Award for Teaching Excellence for their work with the university's Young Scholars in the summer 2019 pre-college programs. Teaching matters in pre-college courses, whether they're taught online or in person, because they provide young scholars opportunities to learn from and with their peers from around the world. For many, it's the first time they've experienced a learning community outside of their hometown or city with people who have different life experiences than they have had. The instructor in that space is critically important to help bridge the gaps, not only between the course's content and the students learning it, but also connecting across the variety of students' experiences who are enrolled in the course. Big life lessons about engagement, listening, and expanding future possibilities happen in these courses, and a superb instructor makes all the difference in leveraging these lessons so students can be successful in their class and beyond. These students' newfound disciplinary knowledge and critical thinking skills are a testament to Brown University's emphasis on the scholar-teacher, and through these students, we share Brown's approach to teaching and learning with a new, broad audience every year. So I want to again congratulate and also thank our winners for their superb work. I hope that instructing the university's young students was a great learning experience for you as well. Thank you, Dean Marcus. There are two 2019 award winners. So Catherine Contes' course was titled From Mayberry to Netflix, Topics in Television Studies, Race, Gender, and Class. Catherine's commitment to reflective practice was evident through her impeccable curriculum plan that included both formative and summative assessments, clear and transparent expectations, scaffolded learning opportunities, and a pedagogical approach that removed her as the sole authority within the classroom. Megan Lehrer's 2019 course was Animal Minds, the Neural Basis of Animal Cognition and Behavior. Megan set exceptionally clear goals, which were consistently reinforced throughout the course. She provided additional resources to accommodate learners with different backgrounds, she actively sought ways to ensure that all students had an equal voice, and she fostered a sense of collaboration and support. This is the final award, so let's give a final round of Zoom applause for all of our inspiring awardees. And thank you also to the nominators who took time to make visible the important work of these 52 Brown instructors. Thank you and have a good night.